Welcome to the course on Prevention of Sexual Harassment at Workplace. After completing this course, you will be able to Understand Sexual Harassment Understand the global initiatives in prevention of sexual harassment Know the history of how POSH was formulated Know about Prevention, Prohibition and Redressal Mechanism in POSH Understand how to work towards safe and secure workplaces Welcome to the module on Sexual Harassment after completing this module, you will be able to Identify gender issues that are encountered at the workplace Understand sexual harassment Categorize sexual harassment Infer the causes and impact of sexual harassment on individuals and organizations Let us begin this module with a small scenario to understand how well you know about sexual harassment and identify which actions and behaviors qualify as sexual harassment and which do not. Employee 1 works for an international call center and draws a handsome salary. He, he is attracted towards one of his co-workers, employee 2, and offers to take her for a dinner. Did you know? Asking someone for a date or dinner is not an act of sexual harassment. She is not interested in him. Therefore, she confronts him and strictly says she is not interested in his proposition. This does not deter employee 1 and he starts using chat, SMS and emails to send employee 2 inappropriate content that has a sexual overtone. Did you know? Despite a clear indication from the other person, continuing the behavior and sending inappropriate messages qualifies as an act of sexual harassment. Most of us would have seen something like this around us. What do you think? Is this sexual harassment? Does it qualify to be punishable under POSH policy? We will get the answer to these questions and more during the course of this module. The type of attitude depicted in the scenario towards the other sex generally stems from a mindset that starts with gender inequality. Gender inequality affects men as well as women. Let us understand the gender issues faced by both men and women at workplace with the help of an example. Mr. X works for an IT company and finds it difficult to balance family and work. He has been planning since long to give more time for the hobbies that he wanted to pursue and spend more time with his children. His wife is a qualified chartered accountant and had a very successful career before marriage. However, living in a nuclear family, she had given up her job to take care of her family. One day, Mr. X was talking to his colleagues and shared with them his desire to give up his job and take care of the family while his wife acts as the breadwinner of the family and simultaneously fulfills her career aspirations. His suggestions, however, were met by mockery from his friends. They said, Taking care of the family is only the prerogative of women and he would lose the respect of his wife if he took this decision. The given scenario highlights the presence of gender inequality and the mindset that only men can hold important positions and family was only the responsibility of women. Women are working in the same capacity as men in all the work areas and at all levels of society. They have acquired and nurtured the skills and knowledge needed to have a soaring career graph in any profession they choose. Additionally, they have all that is required to get ahead in jobs, some of which were always thought of as men's forte. More and more women are venturing into areas traditionally dominated by men and vice versa. This helps in increase of income in households as well as providing a sense of fulfillment among women. In most of the countries, Governments are ensuring that the potential of women be tapped to the maximum. In India, the IT and the IT-enabled service industry has provided a variety of career opportunities for women. How do you judge if the workplace treats men and women equally with regards to growth opportunities as well as salaries and benefits? Let us understand what is gender inequality and how to identify it at workplace. In generic terms, Inequality refers to provision of unequal opportunities and rewards to people belonging to different social positions or status within a group or society. 
Gender inequality is defined as discrimination that is practiced against men or women on the basis of their sex. Traditionally, women are looked upon as weaker sex. They are thought of as having less capability than men have. Discrimination against women is more pronounced in the Indian society. Let us understand a few signs of gender inequality. Common signs of gender inequality are Difference in pay for men and women doing equal or comparable work Not allowing full and equal participation of women in the workforce Dissuading men for helping out in household chores Providing limited access to occupations and industries on the basis of gender Discrimination in providing different level of education to boys and girls in this course, we would be focusing on the gender inequality prevalent at the workplace and how, sometimes, it manifests as sexual harassment. So, how do we achieve gender equality in organizations and other workplaces? The first step towards removing gender inequality is for the organizations to make policies and procedures to ensure gender sensitivity. Gender sensitivity means that the policies of the organization benefit men and women equally and ensure that inequality is not a routine. Gender issues are often complicated and can impact both women and men. Employees do prefer a gender sensitive organization since it provides a positive work culture. There are various provisions in our constitution to safeguard our rights against gender inequality. Some of them are listed below. Article 14 of the Constitution states, The state shall not deny to any person equality before the law or the equal protection of the laws within the territory of India. Another such provision is contained in Article 15. Article 15 1 states, The state shall not discriminate against any citizen on the grounds of only religion, caste, sex, place of birth or any of them. 15.2 states, No citizen shall on grounds only of religion, race, caste, sex, place of birth or any of them be subject to any disability, liability, restriction or condition with regard to a. Access to shops, public restaurants, hotels and places of public entertainment or b. The use of wells, tanks, bathing roads and places of public resort maintained wholly or partly out of state funds or dedicated to the use of the general public. 15.3 states, Nothing in this article shall prevent the state from making any special provision for women and children. In addition to these laws, there are certain observations by the Honorable Supreme Court of India that define Act of Misconduct. These acts of misconduct are present in the service rules of respective organizations and are punishable. Furthermore, these acts can fall under any of the following categories. Man to man, woman to man, woman to woman. So, how do we decipher whether an action is an act of misconduct? According to the observations of the Honorable Supreme Court, the following would constitute misconduct. Acts which are subversive of discipline. Rowdy conduct in the course of working hours. Misbehavior committed even outside office hours but with precincts of the establishment and directed towards the employees of the said concern. Conduct of such a nature or character that the employee would not be regarded as worthy of employment. For example, use of foul language at the workplace or acts of indecency, sexual harassment or other similar misconduct with or towards another employee, client or person come under the purview of acts of misconduct and are punishable. Now that we are aware of gender inequality, let us understand how it transforms into sexual harassment and what all does sexual harassment include. We will also look at the categories of sexual harassment in details. Let us understand sexual harassment with the help of an example. Miss N and Mr. Q work for ABC Limited. 
they are chatting via WhatsApp. Gradually, conversation shifts to sharing inappropriate messages. Miss N did not mention anything explicitly about not being comfortable with such kind of messages. Such conversations continued for about a month. Miss N's partner got information about this and questioned her. She blamed Mr. Q for making her feel uncomfortable. Miss N's partner started making death threats to Mr. Q. Simultaneously, Miss N raised a posh complaint against Mr. Q. In this scenario, the female employee blamed the male employee even though they both were having an inappropriate conversation that was consensual. This is an example highlighting gender inequality as well as sexual harassment. Sexual harassment relates to the behavior of men towards women in the workplace, but also envelopes harassment of women by another or harassment of men by women. So what exactly is sexual harassment? Sexual harassment can be defined as any unwelcome or unwanted attention of a sexual nature from a co-worker which is a cause for discomfort, humiliation, offense or distress and or interferes with the job. It includes actions of a sexual nature directed at one or more workers by a person or a group of people. Sexual harassment can manifest in the form of unwelcome touching or offensive or sexually suggestive jokes aimed at women on the basis of her sexual identity. Harassment can also involve promises of advancement in exchange for sexual favors. Let us understand who carries out harassment. Women can also be guilty of sexually harassing other women or even men. Similarly, the harasser need not be necessarily a supervisor. It can also be a co-worker or client. So, what qualifies as sexual harassment? According to the Supreme Court guidelines, sexual harassment includes such unwelcome sexually determined behavior as physical contact, a demand or request for sexual favors, sexually colored remarks, showing pornography, any other unwelcome physical, verbal or non-verbal conduct of a sexual nature. For example, luring, telling dirty jokes, making sexual remarks about a person's body, etc. come under sexual harassment. Similarly, Sexually colored remarks could include using double meaning words when talking to the other person or remarking sexually on the dress or accessories worn by the person. What exactly do we understand by workplace? In the organized sector, workplace refers to any of the following. Any department, organization, undertaking, establishment, enterprise, institution, office, branch or unit in the public sector either established or owned controlled or wholly or partly financed by funds received directly or indirectly by the government or local authority or a government company or corporation or a cooperative society. Any private sector organization or a private venture, undertaking, enterprise, institution, establishment, society, trust, non-governmental organization, unit or service provider carrying on commercial, professional, vocational, educational, entertainment, industrial, health services or financial activities including production, supply, sale, distribution or services. Hospitals or nursing homes, any sports institutes, stadium, sports complex or competition or games venue, even the residence if used for training, sports or other related activities. Any place visited by the employee arising out of or during the course of employment including transportation provided by the employer for undertaking such journey, a dwelling place or house. In the unorganized sector, a workplace can be defined as an enterprise owned by individuals or self-employed workers, engaged in the production of goods, engaged in the sale of goods, providing service of any kind whatsoever, where the enterprise employs workers and the number of such workers is less than 10. Let us now understand with the help of examples, common occurrences of harassing conduct or behavior. Harassing conduct can be classified as physical. This includes 
attempt of rape or sexual assault, unwanted deliberate touching, leaning over, cornering, pinching, touching an employee's clothing, hair or body, hugging, kissing, patting or stroking, verbal which includes making unwanted sexual remarks or jokes, raising sexual topics during work discussions, whistling and non-verbal which includes pressurizing the other person for sexual favors, making unwanted sexual gestures, sending unwanted mails, phone calls or SMS. Let us now check your take on a few myths and misconceptions regarding sexual harassment at workplace. Is it myth or fact? Only women can be sexually harassed. Myth Fact This is one of the biggest myths. Men as well as women can be the victims of sexual harassment. In addition, men can sexually harass a man or a woman can sexually harass a woman. Is it myth or fact? Women enjoy being passed comments on and being eve teased. Myth Fact Sexual harassment as well as eve teasing is painful, distasteful, frightening and humiliating. Is it a myth or fact? Ogling at someone to make him or her uncomfortable comes in the purview of sexual harassment. Fact Sexual harassment definition includes ogling a person to make him or her feel uncomfortable. Is it myth or fact? Certain dresses and gestures invite sexual harassment. Myth Fact Nobody can invite sexual harassment. Sexual harassment is a way to display a false sense of power which focuses on sexual orientation. Now, let us learn about the major categories of sexual harassment. Let us understand the categories of sexual harassment with the help of an example. Miss T is an enthusiastic young management trainee working for a software development firm and is new to the city. She is dedicated to her work and ensures that she completes all the tasks assigned to her on time and with perfection. An important project is nearing delivery and her team has decided to stay back after office hours to work on it. After the day's work is completed, her team leader Mr. P insists to drop her to the working women's hostel since it was late. Way to the hostel, Mr. P proposes to Miss T to spend the night with him. Miss T refuses politely but firmly and leaves for her hostel. Next day, Mr. P repeats his request and when Miss T refuses firmly, he threatens her that if she does not agree to him or discloses it to anyone in the office, he would destroy her career. In this scenario, Mr. P is committing a quid pro quo sexual harassment. He is taking advantage of the fact that Miss T is at the starting phase of her career and is ambitious. Additionally, he knows that he has the power to influence her apprenticeship report. Let us understand about quid pro quo sexual harassment. Quid pro quo is a latent term that means doing a favor or providing an advantage to someone in return to something. Quid pro quo harassment occurs when a manager or anyone in authority offers or proposes to provide some favor like a salary raise or position to an employee in return for that employee's satisfaction of a sexual demand. Additionally, this type of sexual harassment also occurs if the manager promises not to fire or punish an employee for her wrongdoing if she provides him some kind of sexual favor. This kind of behavior can also be seen in case of a job applicant being told that the decision to hire her depends on the acceptance or rejection of sexual advances. Next is Hostile Working Environment Hostile working environment is a category of sexual harassment in which the employee is subject to physical, verbal or non-verbal conduct or behavior that is uninvited and unwelcome. In contrast to quid pro quo sexual harassment where the harasser is an authoritative or superior position than the employee, a co-worker or a boss can create a hostile working environment that does not provide an employee with a favorable condition to carry out his or her duties. A hostile working environment is generally related to the gender of the person being harassed. It interferes with the ability of the person to do his or her job. 
The common behaviors that attribute to a hostile working environment are stalking, ogling, and gossiping against the employee. Another common form of sexual harassment is psychological harassment. Psychological harassment is defined as humiliating or abusive behavior, which is identified by comments, behavior, actions, or gestures that are frequent, hostile, and are intended to negatively affect the employee's integrity and dignity. Psychological harassment can be countered only if it is prevented from becoming repetitive and is nipped in the bud by the employer. This means that the employer must take reasonable steps to put an end to such a behavior whenever it is brought to their notice. When harassment is carried out using computer and the internet, it is known as internet harassment. Internet harassment is prevalent at home, school as well as work. It is also called cyberbullying. It is defined as the use of the internet to threaten or harass the other person. Examples of cyberbullying include spreading rumors, sending unwanted emails, sending viruses by email, harassing a person using chat, comments or tweets, sending sexually suggestive messages. Now that we have learnt about types of sexual harassment, let us understand what the reasons that lead to such behavior are. A major cause of sexual harassment includes flawed upbringing and lack of values of the harassers. The viewpoint that they grow up with impacts their behavior throughout life. In addition, some men get a false sense of power when harassing women. There are some others who feel threatened when women do well in their career. Their ego cannot accept the fact that women are equally capable of doing whatever men can. Sometimes, the lax attitude of the organization towards incidents of sexual harassment also encourages harassers to subjugate women co-workers and display their aggression and discomfort by way of sexual harassment. Let us understand the harassers based on their psychology. It is difficult to know the psychology of the sexual harassers. However, there are certain common traits that you may find in people exhibiting sexual harassment. Some of the harassers experience self-esteem issues leading to exhibiting such behavior. Harassers can be broadly categorized into six groups. Mr. Macho, those who link harassment to bravado. The great gallant is a category of harassers, harassers that pay excessive compliments and make personal comments at their victims. The opportunist. This kind of harasser look for opportunities such as office parties, being alone in elevators, etc. and ogle at women and touch them inappropriately. The power player. The harasser belonging to this category exhibits the power of their position to get sexual favors from women. The serial harasser. He is habitual and may be having an underlying psychological problem. The situational harasser. This category of harasser displays the conductor behavior due to a life situation or a medical problem such as divorce, wife's illness, impotence, etc. Let us try to gauge the impact of sexual harassment on the employees. Sexual harassment impacts employees physically, mentally, emotionally, as well as financially. Some of the common impacts of sexual harassment on the victims are psychological suffering including humiliation, reduced motivation, loss of self-esteem and loss of trust. Behavioral change include isolation, emotional withdrawal from friends, family and co-workers, stress-related physical and mental illness including sleep disturbances, stomach ailments as well as drug and alcohol abuse. Professional losses, foregoing career opportunities, leaving employment. Sexual harassment not only impacts the employees but also the organization per se. Common impacts on the organization are Sexual harassment at the workplace results in low productivity. This happens because of the lack of trust between team members, absence of motivation to work to one's full potential, low attendance and higher attrition rate. It can result in lack of progress and innovation because team members do not trust each other or the employer. Sexual harassment instances result in the loss of goodwill for the organization. Applicants do not apply for jobs in such companies because of the fear of sexual harassment.
welcome to the module on global initiatives in prevention of sexual harassment after completing this module you will be able to summarize initiatives taken by developed nations to cope with sexual harassment describe initiatives taken by developing nations for curbing sexual harassment in the previous module we discussed sexual harassment and its types we also discussed the underlying causes of such behavior and the harmful effect it has on individuals and organizations sexual harassment is not just prevalent in india but has been experienced by women all around the world it has a deep rooted negative impact on the quality of work in specific and quality of life in general and impacts the well-being of women and men in this module we will look at initiatives workplace policies and programs undertaken by various developed and developing countries to cope with the menace of sexual harassment and ensure that such harassers are severely punished the government issues guidelines on how to design anti sexual harassment policies and procedure as well as offer counseling to workers who have been the targets for sexual harassment The UN General Assembly adopted the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women (CEDAW) in the year 1979. This convention is acknowledged as an international bill of rights for women. It consists of a preamble and 30 articles and defines discrimination against women. It also provides a plan to end such discrimination. Let us look at how does convention defines discrimination according to cedaw convention discrimination against women is defined as any distinction exclusion or restriction made on the basis of sex which has the effect or purpose of impairing or nullifying their recognition enjoyment or exercise by women irrespective of their marital status on a basis of equality of men and women of human rights and fundamental freedoms in the political economic social cultural civil or any other field let us examine the cedaw convention a little more closely cedaw is an international treaty and was the first attempt to lay down guidelines to promote basic human rights and specifically underline the rights of women It provides an agenda to counter gender discrimination across all the countries that adhere to this convention. Since its inception, 189 countries have ratified it. India ratified it in 1993. The contents of this treaty are divided into six parts that span 30 articles. The major focus areas of these articles are Article 1 emphasizes the definition of discrimination and clearly defines discrimination against women and what all it covers. Article 2 talks about the obligations that must be taken to eliminate discrimination. It specifies that all countries must let go of laws that discriminate among employees. It also emphasizes that the policies to eliminate discrimination must be adopted as a part of the national legal framework. Article 3 discusses the development of women. It further states that women are equal to men in all respects in all the spheres of life and nations must take steps to uphold women's equality in all fields including cultural, political, social and economic fields. Article 4 focuses on the acceleration of equality. It further asks countries to implement temporary measures in order to accelerate the equality of women. Article 5 explains sex roles and stereotyping. This article elaborates stereotyping and prompts the countries to modify or eliminate such practices that encourage stereotyping. Article 6 elaborates the problem of exploitation of women and emphasizes that it must be stopped at all costs. So, how do we understand what acts portray human rights violation? A few examples of human rights violation are restriction of freedom violation of personal safety at workplace and at leisure denial of equal opportunity in terms of choosing a career disrespect of dignity of women by others or intolerance for difference of opinion with others now 
Let us take a look at how the developing nations including India are taking steps to counter the menace of sexual harassment. Let us take an example of the occurrence of sexual exploitation in India and the options available to counter it. Consider a scenario. Maya belongs to a financially backward community and works as a nanny for a working couple. The woman, however, leaves for work an hour before her husband. However, as soon as the lady of the house goes out to work, her husband starts touching Maya inappropriately and making lewd comments at her. Do you know that such instances now come under Sexual Harassment of Women at Workplace, Prevention, Prohibition and Redressal Act 2013? Let us look at the salient features of the Posh Act. The Sexual Harassment of Women at Workplace, Prevention, Prohibition and Redressal Act 2013 was implemented with effect from 9th December 2013. The Act seeks to cover all women, irrespective of their age or employment status and protect them against sexual harassment at all workplaces in both public and private sector, whether organized or unorganized. Sexual harassment at the workplace is defined in a comprehensive manner, in keeping with the definition laid down in the Vishakha judgment and broadening it further to cover circumstances of employed or explicit promise or threat to a woman's employment prospects or creation of hostile work environment or humiliating treatment which can affect her health or safety. The Act further defines the workplace to include organizations, department, office, branch unit, etc. in the public and private sector, organized and unorganized, hospitals, nursing homes, educational institutions, sports institutes, stadiums, sports complex and any place visited by the employee during the course of employment including the transportation. For the first time, the Act provides protection to regular or temporary or ad hoc or daily wage employees, whether for remuneration or not, and can include volunteers. This covers domestic workers too. The Act under Section 4 and Section 6 creates a redressal mechanism in the form of internal committee that is IC and local committee that is LC. The Act mandates that the committee shall complete the inquiry within a period of 90 days. On completion of the inquiry, the report will be sent to the employer or the district officer, as the case may be, and they are mandated to take action on the report within 60 days. The Act under Section 19 casts a responsibility on every employer to create an environment which is free from sexual harassment. We will discuss the Act in details in the next module. Welcome to the module History of Prevention of Sexual Harassment at the Workplace. In the previous module, we discussed about various initiatives taken by the developed and developing nations to prevent sexual harassment. We also discussed in brief the articles in the CEDAW Convention and how it acts as a base for most of the sexual harassment laws. Further, we discussed the salient feature of Bosch. After completing this module, you will be able to summarize Initiatives taken by developed and developing nations to cope with sexual harassment. Discuss the rights provided by our constitution that guarantee freedom from sexual harassment and gender discrimination. And explain the Vishakha guidelines and their implication. Let us understand the need for women empowerment in India. India has a history of domination and discrimination done by men over women. Indian women have been suppressed and have been a target of a variety of violence and discriminatory practices. In addition, we have developed various customs, traditions and practices over the centuries that have become a part of our society, more so because of the number of religions and religious beliefs it embraces. These religious beliefs also had some ill practices associated with it like dowry, parda system, sexual harassment at workplace, etc. To eliminate these ill practices and discrimination against women, various constitutional and legal rights have been provided. Additionally, several self-help groups and NGOs are working in this direction. Women are achieving great success in all dimensions, 
social, political, as well as economic. However, the society finds it difficult to accept women as being equal to men. The key focus of women empowerment is to provide women the strength and skills to progress further in all spheres of life. It is equally important to educate men regarding women issues and inculcating a sense of respect and duty towards women as equals. In this module, we will focus on the laws of women empowerment with regard to the workplace culture. Let us take a look at some statistics that clearly indicate the need for strict laws to curb sexual harassment. Before we look at the timelines on how Bosch evolved, let us learn about certain shocking statistics that have been revealed by studies and surveys conducted by various bodies such as National Crime Records Bureau, Indian National Bar Association and NCW. These survey reports clearly highlight the rise of complaints of sexual harassment in the last few years. They also clearly indicate that sexual harassment at workplace is not a one-off incident but rather an uncomfortable reality. It also highlights a steep rise in sexual harassment complaints. Recent statistics by National Commission of Women NCW suggest that the cases of complaints regarding sexual harassment at the workplace are rising every year. The NCW received an average of 1.7 complaints per day. Additionally, cumulative data for four years from 2014 shows a similar trend with the NCW receiving 1.8 complaints per day on average. In four years, the Commission received 1,971 complaints. In addition, the Indian National Bar Association conducts a survey called Garima that reaches out to over 6,047 people out of which 78% were women working in sectors such as BPOs, IT, education, legal and hospitality. According to the report, over 38% women claimed to have faced sexual harassment at workplace while 50.7% had been targets of harassment online. Out of these, 68.9% said they refrained from making a complaint due to fear, embarrassment and lack of confidence. However, it is not just women who are victims of sexual harassment at workplace. A survey was conducted in this regard by Times Jobs among 1,100 male employees pan India. The results of the survey were shocking. Survey results show that mostly females, that is 60%, are the victimizers when men are harassed at workplace. The survey also shows that 53% of the victimizers were from middle level of management, while 20% of them represented the top management. Another revelation of the survey was that 30% of men feel hesitant in talking about workplace harassment because they fear of being mocked at by their colleagues. About 65% of men say that they have been judged based on their looks and sexuality at their workplace. Adding to this, around 56% of men say that they have been recipient of unwanted lures and gestures at their organizations. Let us now look at how the Porsche came into existence. In 2007, the Union Cabinet approved the Draft of Protection of Women Against Sexual Harassment at Workplace Bill 2007. In 2010, the bill was introduced in the Lok Sabha. In 2012, the bill was amended, reintroduced in the Lok Sabha. On September 3, 2012, the Sexual Harassment of Women at Workplace Prevention, Prohibition and Redressal Bill 2012 was passed by the Lok Sabha. On February 26, 2013, the Sexual Harassment of Women at Workplace Prevent Prohibition and Redressal Bill 2012 was passed by the Rajya Sabha. On April 23, 2013, the Prevention of Workplace Sexual Harassment Act received the President's assent and was published in the Gazette of India as Act No. 14 of 2013. On December 2013, the Indian Ministry of Women and Child Development notified December 9, 2013 as the effective date of the Prevention of Workplace Sexual Harassment Act and the Prevention of Workplace Sexual Harassment Rules. Next, let us go through the rights provided in our Constitution. 
Apart from the ratification of CEDAW, the Indian Constitution specifies other fundamental rights to ensure the liberty of women. Additionally, it also permits the state to take steps to ensure that women are aware of their rights and overcome the limitations. Indian Constitution provides a plethora of provisions to secure gender equality. Various articles in the Constitution safeguard women's rights by putting them at par with men socially, politically and economically. These articles are present in the preamble, the fundamental rights, directive principles as well as other constitutional provisions. The preamble to the Constitution of India assures justice in all spheres of life that is economic, social as well as political. It guarantees equality of status and opportunity and dignity to all the citizens. It treats both men and women as equal. Additionally, the fundamental rights of our constitution enshrine the policy of women empowerment. Some of the provisions are Article 14 ensures to women the right to equality. Article 15.1 specifically prohibits discrimination on the basis of sex. Article 15.3 empowers the state to take affirmative actions in favor of women. Article 16 provides for equality of opportunity for all citizens in matters relating to employment or appointment to any office. Furthermore, the directive principles of state policy of our constitution contain provisions regarding women empowerment. It is the duty of the government to apply these principles while making laws or formulating any policy. Although directive principles are not justiciable in the court, they are essential for governance. Some of the directive principles are Article 39A provides that the state to direct its policy towards securing for men and women equally the right to an adequate means of livelihood. Article 39D mandates equal pay for equal work for both men and women. Article 42 provides that the state should make provision for securing just and humane conditions of work and for maternity relief. Here is the list of some specific laws which were enacted by the parliament in order to fulfill constitutional obligation of women empowerment. The Equal Remuneration Act 1976 The Dowry Prohibition Act 1961 The Immoral Traffic Prevention Act 1956 The Maternity Benefit Act 1961 The Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act 1971 the Commission of Sati Prevention Act, 1987. The Prohibition of Child Marriage Act, 2006. The Preconception and Prenatal Diagnostic Techniques, Regulation and Prevention of Misuse Act, 1994. The Sexual Harassment of Women at Workplace, Prevention, Protection and Redressal Act, 2013. Now let us understand the guidelines issued by the Supreme Court for preventing sexual harassment at workplace. These guidelines are known as Vishaka Guidelines. Until 1997, there was no major law to protect the working women from sexual harassment. Let us understand the guidelines provided by the Honorable Supreme Court of India regarding sexual harassment of working women in the Vishaka Judgment in 1997. The Vishaka guidelines are based on CEDAW. The guidelines need to be strictly adhered to at all workplaces, whether public or private sector, and are enforceable by the law. The major takeaways of the Vishaka guidelines are as follows. Employers and or other responsible people in a workplace must prevent or deter sexual harassment and set up processes to resolve, settle or prosecute in such cases. In case of sexual harassment complaint, employers should create appropriate mechanisms so that the complaint is addressed and redressed in a time-bound manner. All employees must provide a complaint mechanism that consists of a complaints committee, a special counsellor or other support service such as assuring confidentiality. The employer must sensitise female employees to their rights and prominently notify the court's guidelines. Even if a third party is responsible for sexual harassment, the employer must take all steps necessary to support the victim. Sexual harassment is defined and includes unwelcome sexually determined behaviour such as physical contact and advances, 
demand or request for sexual favors, sexually colored remarks, showing pornography or other unwelcome physical, verbal or non-verbal conduct of sexual nature. The Complaints Committee should have a woman as its head and at least half its members must be women. The Complaints Committee must involve a third party such as an NGO family await the challenges of sexual harassment. Next, let us understand the details of the Sexual Harassment of Women at Workplace Prevention, Prohibition and Redressal Act. In 2013, India approved the Sexual Harassment of Women at Workplace Prevention, Prohibition and Redressal Act. The purpose of this act is to prevent sexual harassment against women at the workplaces. It also makes the employee responsible for provision of protection against sexual harassment as well as putting into place a redressal mechanism for complaints of or related to sexual harassment. According to Bosch Act, the term sexual harassment includes unwelcome acts of behavior whether directly or by implication, such as physical contact and advances, demand or request for sexual favors, making sexually colored remarks, showing pornography or any other unwelcome physical verbal or non-verbal conduct of sexual nature. Examples of sexual harassment include implied or expressed promise to preferential treatment or implied or explicit threat of detrimental treatment in her employment, implied or explicit threat about her present or future employment, interference with work, creating an intimidating, offensive or hostile work environment, any humiliating treatment likely to affect health or safety of a woman. Let us take an example to understand instances of sexual harassment at workplace. Miss B has studied in the top-notch university in US and just starting a promising career in India with a well-renowned internet service provider. Since she has returned to India after a long time, she is still struggling to adjust in the Indian work culture. Mr. Q, her immediate boss, comes as a very caring person and tries to go an extra mile to ensure that Miss P feels comfortable at the workplace. However, as time passes, he starts making more and more personal remarks on her attire, her makeup and her hairstyle. Miss P feels uncomfortable when Mr. Q is around. She also conveys to Mr. Q to stop giving such personal remarks and tries to avoid his company. But... Mr. Q continues his sexually oriented remarks. One day, when he meets her in the lift, he says the color of her lipstick makes her look very desirable. This was the last straw to break the camel's back. Miss P filed a sexual harassment case against Mr. Q for making sexually colored remarks about her despite her multiple warnings. Take another instance. A group of women complained in the posh cell of their company against a woman Say, Miss R of their team saying that she was being preferentially treated by her supervisor just because of her dressing sense and good looks. On probing further, it came to the light that she was being preferred over her teammates because of her sheer caliber and her ease to communicate with the clients in a flawless and convincing manner. The other women were jealous of her and lodged a false complaint against her. Now let us understand the guidelines in Posh Act regarding the Complaints Committee. Complaints Committee. As discussed, it is essential for an employer to create a Complaints Committee. Let us understand the guidelines for forming the Internal Committee. Internal Committee. It is mandatory for every employer to constitute an internal that is IC, which entertains the complaints made by an aggrieved woman. An IC must have a presiding officer, not less than two members from amongst employees preferably committed to the cause or women or who have had experience in social work or have legal knowledge, and one member from amongst non governmental organizations or associations committed to the cause of women or a person familiar with the issues relating to sexual harassment. At least one half of the members of IC nominated by employer are women. Local Committee Every district must constitute a local committee that is LC to receive complaints of harassment from organizations where the IC does not exist as a result of having less than 10 workers. The LC also comes into play when the complaint is against the employer himself. An employee can be any one of the following. Regular, temporary, ad hoc or daily wage employees. 
Persons who are working on a voluntary basis includes contract workers, probationers and trainees. Now, let us look at how a posh complaint is filed and addressed. An agreed woman must file a complaint within three months of the date of the incident. If the woman is prevented from filing the complaint, the time limit for filing complaint can be extended for another three months. Once the complaint is received, the ICOLC must conduct an inquiry according to the rules under the Act. The inquiry must be completed within a period of 90 days in case the complainant is a domestic worker. If the LC feels a prima facie case exists, the LC needs to forward the complaint to the police to register a case under the relevant provisions of IPC. If the IC finds that the allegations to be true, it submits a report to the employer to take action for sexual harassment as a misconduct in accordance with the provisions of the applicable rules. To deduct from the salary or wages of the respondent appropriate sum that needs to be paid to the aggrieved woman or to her legal heirs. The employer must act on these recommendations within 60 days. Additionally, Government of India has provided a sexual harassment electronic box called She Box. This provides a single window access to every woman, irrespective of her work status, whether working in organized or unorganized, private or public sector, to facilitate the registration of complaint related to sexual harassment. Any woman facing sexual harassment at workplace can register their complaint through this portal. Once a complaint is submitted to the She Box, it will be directly sent to the concerned authority having jurisdiction to take action into the matter. To register a complaint using a She Box, perform the following steps. Go to the website shebox.nic.in. Click Register Your Complaint tab. Choose whether you are government or private employee. In case you are a government employee, you need to select whether you work for the central or the state government. Fill up the registration form on the website. Confirm the registration process using your email ID. Keep track of the status of your complaint. Welcome to the module Prevention, Prohibition and Redressal. In the previous lesson, we learned about the need for women empowerment in India. We also looked at the timelines how the prevention of sexual harassment at workplace was established in India. Additionally, we learned about various other provisions in our constitution that support women empowerment. We also learned about the She Box initiative of the government to provide a single window for registering and tracking sexual harassment complaints. After completing this module, you will learn in detail about the implementation of POSH in the workplace. You will also know the steps that need to be taken by the employer to prevent and prohibit sexual harassment. In addition, you will know about the redressal mechanism that needs to be followed if an employee registers a sexual harassment case. Let us understand the measures that need to be taken by organizations to prevent and prohibit sexual harassment. According to POSH, it is the responsibility of the employer to create an environment in the organization that deters the behavior of sexual exploitation. Let us learn about how employers can ensure a positive sexual harassment free progressive workplace. Let us understand the role of the employer in creating a bias free work environment with the help of a scenario. Mr. R is the owner of a small company with 15 employees. He recruited a new receptionist, Miss P, for his office. However, she finds that whenever he calls her in the cabin, he keeps on ogling her. This makes her feel very uncomfortable and she strictly retorts by asking him to stop his overtures. In response, Mr. R says that he liked her very much when she came for the interview and had given her a job only because of her attractive looks. Therefore, she must not complain and must support his feelings. Such statements come under the purview of sexually colored remarks and are punishable under the POSH Act. Additionally, it brings a bad name to the organization as well as lower the morale of other employees in the organization. Employers must take all possible steps to avoid the occurrence of such situations. Here are a few tips as to how an employer can prevent and prohibit sexual harassment at the workplace. 
The employer must organize workshops and awareness programs from time to time, informing its employees about the company policies regarding sexual harassment and educating employees about the steps they must follow if they encounter sexual harassment at the workplace. The employer must ensure a safe environment, not only to employees but also to anyone who comes in contact with the employee, such as clients, customers, vendors, etc. The employer must create a policy prohibiting sexual harassment and treat sexual harassment as a misconduct under service rules. The employer must display the sexual harassment policy and the corresponding penal consequences for violation in conspicuous places like the notice board. Employer must also form an internal committee. Additionally, it must provide the committee members adequate powers to act on complaints. Every organization has its own version of the anti-sexual harassment policy in consonance with the need and ideology of the organization. It must also be in tandem with the new act. Additionally, it must be written in a simple language so that all the employees easily understand it. However, there are certain key components that must be included in the policy. Some of them are Commitment to eradicate sexual harassment at workplace Definition of sexual harassment Process to file a complaint Contact details of the internal complaints committee Non-disclosure of identity Penalty for violations Code of conduct Let us now discuss the redressal mechanism of a sexual harassment complaint. As we have discussed, the internal committee is very important component of the redressal process. Let us further elaborate the role of the internal committee in prevention and redressal mechanism. The core objectives of the internal committee to prevent sexual harassment of women at the workplace are to formulate an anti-sexual harassment policy against sexual harassment of women, to provide a mechanism for the prevention and redressal of sexual harassment cases as well as other cases of gender inequality, to ensure that the policy is implemented completely with regards to reporting and follow-up of the complaints, to help provide an environment that is free from gender-based discrimination, to create a secure physical and social environment to deter acts of sexual harassment, to raise awareness about sexual harassment and its various forms. Let us understand the process of conciliation. The steps are Once the IC or the LC receives a complaint, the committee members at the request of the aggrieved woman takes steps to settle the matter between her and the respondent through conciliation. This, however, does not include any monetary settlement. If the conciliation settlement is arrived at, the IC or the LC record the settlement arrived at and forward the same to the employer or the district officer to take action as specified in the recommendation. The IC or LC provides the copies of the settlement to the aggrieved woman and the respondent. Where a settlement is arrived at, the IC or the LC conducts no further inquiry. In case the conciliation process does not work, Inquiry is initiated by the IC or LC. The steps of inquiry are as follows. Send a copy of complaint to all members of IC as well as to the respondent within seven days of receiving a complaint. The respondent needs to respond to the complaint within the next 10 days. In case conciliation is not attempted, the IC or LC initiates inquiry and investigation. IC has the powers equivalent to that of a civil court, that is, summoning and enforcing attendance of any person and examining them on oath, requiring the discovery and production of documents. Both parties should be given copies of the complaint and findings so that they can represent themselves. If either party does not turn up, ex-party decision can be taken after giving sufficient notice. If it is a criminal case, help the aggrieved file an FIR at the police station. To ensure that the Sexual Harassment Act is not used for malicious intentions, there is a provision for penalty in such cases. Any individual found lodging a false complaint or false evidence is liable for disciplinary action, up to and including termination of employment as per the rules of the organization.
where the complaints committee arrives at the conclusion that the allegation against the respondents is malicious or the aggrieved woman or any other person making the complaint has made the complaint knowing it to be false or the aggrieved woman or any other person making the complaint has produced any false or misleading documents it may recommend to the employer as the case may be to take action welcome to the module working towards safe and secure workplaces in the previous module you learned about the implementation of posh in the workplace you also learned about the steps that need to be taken by the employer to prevent and prohibit sexual harassment additionally you learned about the redressal mechanism that needs to be followed if an employee registers a sexual harassment case as we discussed in module 1 Sexual harassment takes a toll on the overall growth of the organization as well as has a deep rooted negative impact on the morale of the employees of the company. In this module, we will discuss ways in which both organizations as well as employees can contribute towards a safe and healthy work environment. Let us understand some measures that can be taken by the organization to create a safe and secure workplace. Rules and policy details regarding prohibition of sexual harassment at the workplace must be brought to the notice of all employees. They must also be circulated from time to time within the organization. The rules and regulations regarding the conduct and discipline must also specify rules regulations prohibiting sexual harassment and have provisions for penalties for such offender. Enabling work conditions should be provided with respect to work health and hygiene to ensure that the environment towards women is not hostile organizations must also ensure that women employees must not feel disadvantaged when a complaint is made the employer must take appropriate action according to the law by helping the aggrieved lodge a complaint with the appropriate authority employers should also ensure that the victim or witness of a sexual harassment complaint does not feel victimized while the complaint is being acted upon if there is a written request from the aggrieved woman there must be a provision for transferring the complainant or respondent to any other workplace granting leave to the aggrieved up to a period of 3 months granting other reliefs as necessary It is not just the duty of the employer or the organization to keep the workplace safe and secure. The employees can also take a few steps to ensure their own safety. Although providing a safe working environment is the responsibility of the employer, the women employees can also take steps to deter any such untoward incident happening to them. Some of the steps they can take are Do not tolerate sexually toned behavior from colleagues and be aware of one's own rights. Stop telling yourself that a specific type of behavior is inevitable on the part of men and must be tolerated. Resist any attempt of sexual harassment the first time it occurs. If you allow the action to take place without expressing your strongest disapproval, the offender will assume that he has your consent. Don't encourage male colleagues to behave unbecomingly with you or try to attract their attention it is very important to maintain your own self respect keep safe distance from the offending party register a first information report with the police station hi there if you like this video subscribe to the simply learn youtube channel and click here to watch similar videos to nerd up and get certified click here